Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. Today's Down and Dirty is yet another continuation on our GPS series. Today we're going to talk about cutting complex curves and radiuses uh, with a GPS dozer. So what you have to understand is this dozer has a flat blade. It's, it's not got any curve to it. We don't have a curved bottom. We can't fold the edges back or fold them forward to kind of follow parabolic shapes. So in order to cut these slopes, we have to approach it in a certain way so that the machine can understand what's going on and so that we can cut an accurate grade. And right here we have a prime example. I'm going to swipe over with two fingers. If you don't know what I'm doing here, click up above to watch my GPS overview video. But what we've done is I want to show you the contour lines here. And we're actually going to change our view to 3D so that you guys can understand. In fact, before I do that, let me zoom out so you can see where we are. We are in the middle of this big retention pond here. And the camera can't really see the full thing, but we are facing down into the retention pond. So we're going to zoom back in, and I'm going to change this over to 3D view so we can all better understand what's going on in our plan. So as we rotate around, you're going to see I'm on a steep slope. There's actually a little bit of a hit point. And then it dives off steep, and then there's a flat bottom that's in a kind of triangular wedge pattern. And this is a perfect example of how to use a GPS dozer because there's a lot of stuff going on here that the machine has to interpret. And really what that boils down to is you as an operator have to interpret. So we're now that we kind of understand our shape, let's look at it one more time. So pretty steep pitch, flat bottom, and then we angle, you're going to notice, we angle right back up the other side. So we're going to recenter ourselves. We're going to go back to our 2D view. And I'm going to go back into our cut, cut screen here. So, oops, sorry, didn't mean to do that. So we're going to zoom in just a hair here. <clears throat> so when we approach this, I'm going to do it the wrong way first. And then I'm going to do it the right way. So when we go to approach this, I'm going to come at this at an angle. So we're going to engage our automatics here. And remember, this is a slope. Oh, I'm sorry. If that ever happens, take a second to figure out what's going on. I had a set with our road grade cut. That's why we were totally out of range. Just take a quick second. Don't panic. You'll generally figure out what's going on when your blade doesn't take over. So now that we've got our correct offset, uh, this red line, by the way, I have selected as a horizontal offset, which if you have no idea what I'm talking about, click up above to watch that video. But I have that highlighted so I know where my flat bottom is, and I'll show you why in just a second. But as we know, we're coming down our slope right here, and then we hit that flat bottom, and I'm going to come at it from an angle. And so I want you to see as we cross over into that flat bottom, my blade doesn't really know what to do because we have this weird, we're coming at it, you know, we're angled to this pitch. And so the blade's trying to somehow match the two of those. And you're not gonna get an accurate cut. I'm actually digging where I shouldn't dig with my left tip. And you see the blade's really struggling to figure out what it's supposed to do. Because we have this angle that's like this, but we're coming at it from a sideways angle and the blade can't make sense of it. That's why you have to come at these things straight on when you're using GPS. And so the way I have to cut this, <clears throat> we're gonna back up our slope here. We're gonna get lined up, and I'm gonna keep this to where our dozer stays straight. That's actually really helpful in this situation. I wanna come at these lines to where I'm hitting, let's get right on the curve, because the curves are really the complex part of this. So I'm coming right at it, and I wanna get relatively square and I can angle my blade to help me get square to that curve and I'm going to turn this view off so we can see our wire frame a little better I apologize if that greens a little difficult to see I don't know if you have the ability to change those contour line colors but you can see my blade we're going to hit this contour roughly with the tips at the same time that's the goal and that allows my blade to follow that contour and you're going to see when we get to the bottom we're going to angle a little more, follow it down, and again, I'm going slow also because my hydraulics need to keep up, which we've talked about in a different video. Now we're on our, we're on our flat bottom, and you can see that on this screen, our cross-cut screen, we have a flat bottom. 
But what's going to happen when I get over to this other side is this tip is going to want to start jumping up because it's going to hit the back side of the slope. So we actually have to start angling our blade and slowly turning our machine so that we hit the other slope square. And so now what we can do, you can see, we still have a flat plane we're operating on. Even though out here it looks like we're totally off-center and weird, we're concerned with what's going on with our plan here. And you can see as we go up this slope, we're going to angle our blade to keep it square. I'm cutting exactly what the plan says I could cut, or I should cut, I should say. And it's because we kept the machine square on this face the whole time. Had we approached that at an angle, you would have made a giant mess of this area because the blade doesn't know how to make those lines match with a flat plane. So again, let's come back up here and we'll actually make a pass where I'm cleaning up. So we're going to come down here, we're going to get relatively square, my automatics are on, we're going to go nice and slow because there's a lot going on and the hydraulics have to keep up. We're going to try to hit that just nice and square. There's our flat bottom. So now I'm gonna go ahead and start to rotate over, ultimately with the goal being to hit this surface here square. So we have to angle pretty far over, and we're just a little out of square, and you can see the blade hop a little bit. I'm actually gonna disengage the automatics because I've got a fair amount of spoils here. And let's start our pass here in the flat bottom. So I need to angle a little bit. We're going to re-engage our automatics. There we are. You're going to see where you hit that plane square. And then you might get, because it's hard to be 100,000% precise as a human being, and these lines are, you know, in reality in the computer, those are super thin. You might get a, a really quick blade jitter or a quick flick with the blade as you cross over. But as long as you're pretty stinking square to it, you're still going to cut an accurate grade as you come across. And you can see beside us here, it's an accurate grade, even though you get that little bit of blade jitter as you come across. And that's how we cut a complex shape like this ditch bottom. Now we're gonna go over here to an actual radius and we're gonna look at how we can actually cut that. Once I back out of this giant pit. So, the slope that we're on right now, we have two ways to cut this and I actually used a combination of both ways to cut this because in a dozer it's always more effective to push downhill uh, when I have my pile here. And so what I'll normally do on a bank like this, again let's go into our 3D view just so we can all see it a little bit better. So you can see this bank just kind of follows the contour lines around. And so what I'll do initially, let's go back into our plan view. So initially what I'll do is I will cut it going perpendicular like we just were to bulk out the material and get it down to the pile for the hoe to load out. But when it's time to do our nice finish passes, we want to really make this thing look nice. And so what I do is I go in and I do a horizontal offset or a horizontal guidance so that I have an alignment line I can follow. And I'm going to pick one of these contour lines that follows my path around this slope. Now I have something that I can follow with my blade here. And what I can do now is we can cut this running parallel with the slope or in line with the slope. All I have to do is keep this red line at the same spot on my blade, assuming we don't have any weird hips or anything going on. I just need to keep that line here. And the blade is automatically going to follow that contour around our slope. You can see we're just a little fat over here on the left side. We're trimming just a hair. And we have another radius coming up. Let me zoom out. So we're gonna follow that all the way around and we're gonna cut the entire pond nice and clean. We just need to keep that red line in the same spot on our blade. 
So I'm getting a little off. I need to correct. So this one's pretty sharp. We're going to have to turn a little harder. And, I, and this is where being a dozer operator is going to come in. Because I did such a sharp turn, I'm probably going to have to dress that up by hand. It's not a problem. I'm a dozer operator. But that's where you can't allow the GPS to just do everything for you. You still have to be able to run a dozer. And there we go. We just cut the entire outside contour of this pond. And it looks really clean and really nice. That's how you're going to do your finish passes around a radius. You have to put yourself in line with the slope in order to get nice clean cuts. And I hope, I hope you can see that. Maybe you can't. But we have a really, really nice looking contour all the way around this pond. So that's how you do complex geometric shapes with a flat blade. You just have to kind of come at it at the right angle. You have to think about your angles to make sure everything works properly. And you should have nice, beautiful finish work when you're done. So as always, I hope this has been helpful. If you have any questions or comments, drop them below. And we'll catch you guys on the next one.